Now you may ask, why am I starting for all these? Because that is the basis. You just need this revision badly. In fact, mm -hmm. once you get this revision, teaching the rest will be very easy for all of us. Level 100, those of you who are in my class, we did most of the things we have to do now. Apart from the academic essay or the scholarly essay itself, we did virtually everything, virtually everything. And so I just need to do this revision with you. And then after this revision, we'll move on to how to do summary, which we did in level 100. So we'll go over it quickly. And then we'll go learn how to write the scholarly essay. And then we'll look at common errors in writing. Besides, it looks like you have a number of quizzes. And in the quizzes, what they will do is that they will pose questions like the ones here. They, will, they can mix them up, like the ones you did in level 100. In fact, in level 200, it's almost the same thing. What is paragraph completeness? What is paragraph coherence? Etc. That's why I'm spending so much time in doing it. Besides, even if official time for us to have our sessions is four, I'll have more than four sessions every anyway. I'll have as many as we can just to make sure that we cover every single area. All right, so let's go on. Last week, I we looked at paragraphs. And then I explained that a paragraph is a group of related sentences that develop one idea or point, right? And then went on to learn that a paragraph has got two parts. That's the topic and the controlling idea. I explained that the topic is the issue that has been discussed. And then the controlling idea tells us how far the paragraph can go in that the paragraph cannot be developed. Come again. Hello, pose your question. You are saying something. Um, sir. Yes, uh, sorry. Um, I, I don't see the sign for the recording. If if someone will do it, we appreciate it so that we can have to so those who could not attend the, to this. The class trip will record it on his phone. And he'll place it. He'll send it to me. I need to place it on Sakai also to show that I've had the class. So the class oh, okay. will record it and he'll send oh, okay. it. There's, a, there's an app for that and I'm sure he's doing it. Oh, okay. So it's, it's okay. Wow. Well, if that's, that's good or no problem. I, I didn't see it. That's why. Class, I, I, class red. Can you uh, uh, okay. uh, write that on the chat? All right. Let's go and now. Recording. Let's go now, please. I'm sure he is. Because last week he recorded. So... I explained that the topic sentence has got two parts, the topic and then the controlling idea. For instance, Kwame is a good boy. The topic is Kwame because the paragraph is going to be about Kwame. And then it's a good boy because we'll be restricted to the fact that Kwame is a good boy. We can't say anything more than this. And then we looked at this other example. A dog is a household pet which freely gives companionship to its owner. And then I said that the topic is a dog because that's what the paragraph is going to talk about. And then it's a household pet which freely gives companionship to its owner is the controlling idea. So in this paragraph, we'll look at a dog as an animal that gives companionship to its owner. We can't go beyond it. Let's skip this. Let me go over, let's get this quickly. And then we also long time a mystery. In ancient times, irrational behavior was considered the result of demons and evil spirits taking possession of a person. Later, Greeks looked upon irrational behavior as a physical problem caused by an imbalance of body fluids called humus or displacement of an organ. In the highly superstitious Middle Ages, the theory of possession by demons was revived. It's reached a high point again in the witch hands of 18th century Europe and America. Only in the one, last 100 years did true medical explanations gain wide acceptance and categories of illnesses changed. All right, so here we are. We realize that the last paragraph, the last sentence here, it makes a judgment. Only in the last 100 years did true medical explanations gain wide acceptance and categories of illnesses changed. All is saying that over here where it says only in the last 100 years did true medical explanations gain wide acceptance. It's making a judgment. That means the other um, um, 
categories, the other medical explanations were not true or they were not the real deal, right? So then this example, we say that this last sentence, um, I'm going there, thank you. Please mute I'm your microphone. There, Can you mute your microphone? We say that this particular place summarizes the main, summarizes the whole paragraph, sorry. Sorry, it makes a judgment in this paragraph. This last sentence makes a judgment in this paragraph. And then we went on to paragraph unity, paragraph completeness, and paragraph coherence. Paragraph unity, paragraph completeness, and paragraph coherence. I believe you have the, most of you were mature students and you have the books I sold to you. If you don't have it, you can come and buy one. And um, I also sent the examples to you. I remember sending a soft copy to you. If you have a proof, you don't have it, I can forward it. I'm sure the classroom has places on the platform. So at a later date, you can also read through. Paragraph unity. Uh, it's simply oneness, or simply means all the sentences in the paragraph work together. It's okay, you mute your microphone. Mute your microphone. Mute your microphone, please. All the sentences in the paragraph work together as one sentence. Sorry, as one whole unit. All the sentences in the paragraph work together as one unit. Any sentence is related to the other by the fact that they have one controlling idea. All the sentences are related together because they have one controlling idea. In other words, all the sentences are working together to develop the controlling idea of the topic sentence. So when we say we have paragraph unity, it means every paragraph is saying or is trying, is helping to develop the controlling idea. No paragraph is saying something other than what we are supposed to be discussing. Now let's look at the example quickly. Now you realize this is the very same paragraph we read earlier on. This time without the the mid the minor supporting okay. yes please um i want to ask a question can i please go ahead and pose your question okay um so um uh, how hold on somebody's asking a question let the person finish all right please go ahead and pose your question um so so how different is paragraph unity from coherence right we are we are we are yet to get to coherence i'll explain it as soon as we get there please thank you sir you're welcome and as soon as I explain it, you get to know that indeed, there's a huge difference between paragraph unity and paragraph coherence. Let's give me a moment. So the classroom will just forward everything onto the platform. He has it. Just remain calm, okay? All right, so Accra is a busy city. The roads are, re just remember that we're talking about paragraph unity. And I explained that all the sentences work together to develop the controlling idea of the topic sentence. All the sentences work together to develop the controlling idea of the topic sentence. That's when we say that we have paragraph unity. And I also said that none of the sentence will say anything other than what the paragraph, what the controlling idea is saying. So, Accra is a busy city. We have the controlling idea, which is, is a busy city. So all the sentences here would help us to explain this. The roads of Accra are always busy. The shops are full of people from the time they open to the time they close. Most of Accra's restaurants and nightclubs are filled to capacity throughout the week. In fact, there's an abundance of hustle and bustle in every sphere of life in Accra. Accra is a busy city. The roads of Accra are always busy. The shops are full of people from the time they open to the time they close. Most of Accra's restaurants and nightclubs are filled to capacity throughout the week. In fact, there's an abundance of hustle and bustle in every sphere of life in Accra. We realize over here that all the sentences are working together to develop this particular controlling idea. No sentence is saying that um, the nice building is in Accra. No sentence is saying that there are many cars in Accra. No. All the sentences are helping to develop the controlling idea, which says that it's a busy city. All right. Can you mute your microphone, please? Let's move on. Let's move on to paragraph completeness. 
Let's move on to paragraph. Gracious Lord. Let's move on to paragraph completeness. Please mute your microphones. There's so much noise coming. I appreciate it. If you mute your microphones for me. All right. Let's go on. Paragraph completeness. I will appreciate it if you have a fellow making noise to mute his microphone. Paragraph completeness, let's proceed. So paragraph completeness, all we are saying is this, that there is enough evidence in the text that no sentence is saying something other than, sorry, gosh, I'm mixing things up. With paragraph completeness, all we are saying is that there is enough evidence in the text. That's all. That there's sufficient evidence in the text. That there's sufficient evidence in the text. I'm trying to find the one making noise. I just can't seem to find the person. Paragraph completeness. It simply means that there is enough evidence in the text. That's all. There's enough evidence in the text. For now, let's bear the noise and let's proceed. That's all. Paragraph completeness simply means that there is enough evidence in the text. That's all. That's the one way to explain it. Paragraph, let's compare these two paragraphs. So let's compare these two paragraphs. One of the paragraphs has enough evidence, the other does not have enough evidence. With the first paragraph, um, it's short. And I'm not saying it does not have enough evidence because it is short. I'm not saying then everyone. I'm going to end the session now. Subsequently, I'll send my own link. I'll take just a hundred people. And then in midweek, I'll send another link. I'll take just another hundred people. Oh, no, 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 no. Please let's continue, sir. Please we beg you. He's All right, let's go on. Oh, okay. okay. So there are two different paragraphs here. One of them is long, the other one is not long. And it's one is detailed. I mean, when I see a paragraph should be detailed, I'm not saying it should be very long. All I'm saying is that there should be enough evidence in it. Some people can write a very detailed paragraph with a few words. We can say that those paragraphs are dense. That's what we can do. That's how we describe them. The language is dense in that they are using a few words, but then they are saying so much. And others would have to write a lot to say very little. So the length of your paragraph doesn't make it detailed or not. Or the length of your paragraph doesn't make it complete or not. Right? I'm going to read the first one. Although he was an outlaw, Jesse James was considered a Robin Hood figure in my hometown misery. He used to be generous to the poor and he did many good deeds, not just robberies. In my hometown, people still talk about how lots of the things James did weren't all bad. Let me go over. Although he was an outlaw, Jesse James was considered a Robin Hood figure in my hometown misery. He used to be generous to the poor and he did many good deeds, not just robberies. In my hometown, people still talk about how lots of the things James did weren't all bad. Let's look at this second example. Although he was an outlaw, Jesse James was considered a Robin Hood figure in my hometown of misery. Jesse and his gang chose my hometown as a hiding place and they set out immediately to make friends with the local people. Every Christmas for four years, the legend goes, he dumped bags of toys on the doorsteps of poor children. The parents knew the toys had been bought of money stolen from rich people, but they were grateful anyway. On three occasions, Jesse gave grocery to the three neediest families. He seemed to know when times were toughest, and once he supposedly held up a stage, to pay for an old man's operation. Let me read it again. Although he was an outlaw, Jesse James was considered a Robin Hood figure in my hometown of misery. Jesse and his gang chose my hometown as a hiding place and they set out immediately to make friends with the local people. Every Christmas for four years, the legend goes, he dumped bags of toys on the doorsteps of poor children. 
The parents knew the toys had been bought of money stolen from rich people, but they were grateful anyway. On three occasions, Jesse bought grocery for the three neediest families. He seemed to know when times were toughest. And once he supposedly held up a stage to pay for an old man's operation. And once he supposedly held up a stage to pay for an old man's operation. All right. So in these two examples, you realize that the second one is longer in that it has more detail. But as I've already explained, your paragraph doesn't need to be long in order to Sir, please, it to your screen is not detailed showing or in order for Sir. it to be complete. Sir. When we say paragraph is complete, Sir. all we are saying is that there is enough evidence in the text. That's all. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. So let's go on. So paragraph coherence. With paragraph coherence, all we are saying is that the ideas in a paragraph should flow together to make a clear logical point about the topic. In other words, your ideas should flow in a systematic manner so that the reader can understand what you are saying. All the sentences and ideas in a paragraph should flow together to make a clear logical point about the topic. Or the idea should flow in a systematic manner so the reader can understand your train of thought. All right. And these are the things you should do when you want to achieve coherence. There are ways to achieve coherence. And these are transitional words and phrases, repetition of key words, the use of pronouns and parallel structures. These are the strategies that you can use to achieve coherence. Transitional words and phrases, repetition of key words, the use of pronouns and then parallel structures. Let me go over, over again, the tra transitional words and phrases, repetition of key words, the use of pronouns, and then parallel structures. Now, before I forget, I, you realize that on the slides that you have, the first thing we have over there is presentations. I need you just to just read those slides. I, with time, I will explain those ones, but then these ones are more urgent because in the exam, it's not likely to ask you to write anything on presentations probably may come in the quizzes or maybe they may bring it maybe they may link it to something else but you definitely write an essay that's why i'm spending my time on this so let's move on to transitional words or phrases these are also known as connectors in some books the name given to them as signal words okay so they are described as signal words and they've been placed under broad headings these broad headings are addition Time, contrast, compare, cause and effect, emphasis, example or illustration, and then special relationship. So addition. And addition, all we are saying is that whenever you see these words, they tell you what the writer is doing. And so when you see any of these words, words like end, furthermore, moreover, Likewise, also, it tells you that the writer is adding extra information to what he has already provided. That's all. It just tells you that the writer is adding extra information to what he has already provided. Hence the name, hence and furthermore, moreover, likewise, and also. And then time. When, with this the ideas help to bring an element of time or the ideas help that whatever you are saying to be arranged in a systematic manner or in a logical manner. We don't know. Looks like the network just went off and we've been reconnected. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just yes, stopped so all of a sudden. So yes, I'll sir. just reshare my stuff. Okay, sir. Yes. Right. So I reshared it. Right. So let's give people just two minutes to go. On. So with our transitional words, I've explained that 
transitional words help us yeah, I read that, that comment, dogs. Right. So transition. <laughs> so whenever you see any of the transitional words or these signal words, they tell us what the what the writer is doing. Okay, they tell us what the writer is doing. So in the addition, whenever you see any of these words, they tell us that the writer is adding extra information to what he has already provided. And so when you see words like end, furthermore, moreover, likewise, also. I should tell you that the writer is adding extra information to what he has already provided. Your behavior is just like your puppy. Let's proceed. And whenever you see, and whenever you see words like, see, whenever you see words like, whenever you see words like next, shortly, after that, after, before, during, later on, thereafter, finally, it tells us that the writer is using the element of time in that <clears throat> the ideas have been arranged in such a manner that if he's narrating something, you understand. Uh, this is best used when you're narrating an incident or when you are explaining a process. So let's say if you, I can say, um, before the class started, we logged on to the internet. After that, we joined... Um, we use the link to join um, the, the app that is known as Zoom. Then Zoom connected us. Later on, the lecturer also joined in. And then finally, the class is ongoing. I've used these same words to tell how we logged onto the internet. These are used when you are explaining a process or when you are narrating an incident, right? And then there is contrast. There is contrast. Contrast is um, used when you're trying to tell the difference in something. When you're trying to tell the difference. And so whenever I see words like, however, conversely, on the other hand, but in contrast, yet, however, Nonetheless, despite, even so, even though, whereas, it means the writer is looking at the opposite of what has already been talked about. Okay. All right. So we can say regular students attend lectures every day of the week. However, distance learners attend lectures at an appointed time in the week. And they also rely on their slides. In this case, you realize I've been able to tell the difference. I've been able to tell the contrast by using the word however. So once you see the word however, I should tell you that the writer is looking at the difference. All right. So compare over here. These words are used when the writer wants to look at the similarities. So once you see these words, they should signal to you that the writer is using, trying, um, comparing or bringing the similarities between two issues. Likewise, in like manner, similarly, in the same way. Likewise, in like manner, similarly, in the same way. In this case, we say the writer is comparing in that the writer is looking at the similarities. Then there is cause and effect. In this case, the writer is looking at the causes of an action and then its result. We have words like so, therefore, thus, consequently, as a result, hence, because of this. So, therefore, thus, consequently, as a result, hence, because of this. That means the writer is looking are the causes and the effects. And then there is emphasis. In this case, the writer is placing emphasis. Just a minute, please. Sheriff, 
So just a moment. Hi, that was nice coming in. Right. So there is, um, these words are used for the sake of emphasis. As soon as you see them, they should point out to you that the writer is bringing emphasis in this discussion. So <clears throat> we're like, indeed, in fact, especially most importantly. And then once we see these words, for example, <clears throat> for instance, to illustrate, it means the writer is looking at the similarities. That's, sorry, the writer is bringing in examples. The writer is bringing in examples. For example, it's obvious, for instance, to illustrate. And a special relationship. These words are used when you are describing a space. So let's say we are describing a room. Now, so the man entered through the door on the left side of the building. He walked to the window that is adjacent to the door and stood directly under the fan. And he stared across, he stared at the old lady seated across the room. Right, so special relationship was like above, below, next, inside, outside, across, along, in front, beside, behind, beyond, there, here, in the distance, alongside, adjacent. All these words bring special relationship. I need to hold on for a second, please. myself. All right, thanks for your patience. All right, so all these words, we know these words already and we've been using them, but now let's use them more because in the, in the exam, the one thing that they require of you is your use of transitional terms or transitional words to move from one idea to the other. Okay. All right, let's look at some examples. Right. One day as I crossed the street, I heard something hit the ground near me. Then I felt the sting of the cold hard earth. <coughs> Excuse me, please. <coughs> then I felt the sting of the cold hard earth hitting me at the back of my neck. I stopped and looked at the direction of Ricky's house, but I could not see where he was hiding. I brushed most of the dirt out of my hair and kept walking, trying to ignore being hit several times before I made it home. Let me go on. One day as I crossed the street, I heard something hit the ground near me. Then I felt the sting of the cold hard head hitting me at the back of my neck. I stopped and looked at the direction of Ricky's house, but I could not see where he was hiding. I brushed most of the dirt out of my hair and kept walking trying to ignore being hit several times before I made it home. Wow. Now, because this person is narrating an, an incident, we would see transitional terms that relate to time more than every other transitional term. So we have the example say one day, one day, once you see day or time, let's say 10 o'clock, five o'clock yesterday, they all form, form, fall under the heading time. If you recall over here, they fall under this heading time. They fall under this heading time, please. All right. All right. They fall under the heading time. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know whether you, you, you have to reshare your screen because some of us, we can't see anything. I think I need to reshare because I got a message right now that my internet has become unstable. So I think it may be from my side. Let me reshare it. Okay. okay. I hope you can see it now. I've started resharing it again. Can you see, gentlemen? No, please. 
No, it. no, sir. Do it again. No, sir, please, you can't say it. Okay, let me do it again. All right, no, let's sir, give it a few minutes. Me. Let's give it a few minutes for you to load. I hope you can see it now. No. No, no sir. sir, please, you can't say it. No, sir, you can't see it. No, sir, can't see it. Sir, please, if you can't see it. Uh, I'll advise the restart or refresh their page for it to show. But some of us are seeing it. I think some, see it. those using their mobile phones are finding it, are finding it difficult to see. Exactly. But I was also using a phone, but when the network strip, I switched to my laptop. I can see it now. I'm using the phone, but I'm seeing the screen. Please. That is why yeah, I'm using, using the phone. Sometimes it's the network. Sometimes it's the network. I was using my network. network. Yeah, be patient. When your screen goes off, okay. it will definitely tell hey, you. Hey, really? Okay. Hey, hey. hey. It's okay. My mind has been off for about 15 minutes, but I was patient. It has come. So just relax. Maybe It'll me, come. Maybe me using Nokia 210. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so let's give it some time. It will come. Yeah, it will come. Nice, I we can't see anything. The class is tearing from our eyes. Okay. Hello. Right. Hello. Very good Hello. Hello. Very good phone. Hello, Mr. Hello. Yes. What phone, uh, what, what I think phone those are you who are using mobile phone and they are not what seeing phone the screen. Are you using? Check on their phone. There are All some right. three dots. Uh, it was about seven dots down the screen. If you mistakenly press press. The middle one or the, the very last one on right take you off the screen to another page where you'll be seeing the the, the, the members or the chat and all that. So they mm. should check on their phone. No, 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 right. No, 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 Let's proceed. Let's proceed. My network is quite strong now. All right. Okay. Let's go on. So in this example, we see where it's like one day, then, and then there's before. All right. We also have bats over the bats is supposed to show contrast, but because this paragraph talks about an incident, we have elements um, transitional terms that deal. With um time and numbering any other that's why we have one day then and we also have before that's sir before. hello sir i can only see your case moving <laughs> then then it means yeah. it will come soon if you yeah, can see sir. the cave the case and then yeah. give it some time I'm sure yeah, for come. about for about 10 minutes now you see your case that i'm seeing moving Please, can we keep quiet and listen to the tutorial? Please, please. let's continue. Are you, let's continue. Can you allow the senior to express that? Right, let's continue. If you have a question, just kindly raise your hand. All right, let's go on. Several months ago, my son, who is only six years old, came home from school with an unusual drawing. What made this picture different from his others was his brilliant array of colors. Ordinarily, Jesus' drawings consist of a fast dash of a pencil or marker with the scribble of a single color to fill in the outline. This time, Jason had been careful of the lines and borders. It was clear and distinct. Obviously, something had intrigued him enough to make him sit longer than its normal 30 seconds. I wanted to know what it was. <laughs> Let me go over. Seven months ago, my son who is only six years old came home from school with an unusual drawing. What made this picture different from his others was a brilliant array of colors. Ordinarily, Jesus' drawings consist of a fast dash of pencil or marker with the scribble of a single color to fill in the outline. This time, Jason had been careful with the lines and borders. It was clear and distinct. Obviously, something had intrigued him enough to make him sit longer than his normal 30 seconds. I wanted to know what it was. Over here, the traditional things here deal mainly with 
time and then emphasis. We have several months ago over here that is a time because the writer is narrating and then there is ordinarily that is for emphasis um, and then obviously baby is crying like that. also for emphasis. Please go on, go on, we are going on. No need to talk, let's go on. So there are, there are transitional terms and the transitional terms are several months ago. I told you whenever you see anything that has to do with time or a period, it falls under time and the transitional terms. And then there's ordinarily, ordinarily is for emphasis. And then there's obviously also for the sake of emphasis. There's another way of achieving coherence in your text. And that is the use of repetition. In this case, the writer repeats the, uh, the main idea or a key term in the text. So sometimes it's an idea that is repeated. It's just that if it's an idea to be repeated with different words, not the same thing will be restated. Okay? And if it's a key term, that key term will, will be used a number of times in the text. Keep in mind that these are techniques we've been using all this while. But over here, what we are doing is that we are drawing our attention to these so that we start using them consciously instead of unconsciously. One of the most common and puzzling phobias is the fear of snakes. It's only natural, of course, to be afraid of a poisonous snake. But many people are just as frightened of the harmless varieties. For such people, a tiny green grass snake is as terrifying as a cobra. Some researchers say this unreasonable fear of any and all snakes is a legacy left to us by our cave dwelling ancestors. Take note, some words are being repeated. Some researchers say this unreasonable fear of any and all snakes is a legacy left to us by our cave dwelling ancestors for whom these reptiles were a real and constant danger. Others maintain that the fear is as a result of our associating the snake with the notion of evil as in the Garden of Eden. Whatever the reason, the fact remains that for many otherwise normal people, the mere sight of a snake slithering through the countryside is enough to keep them city dwellers forever. Let me read it again. One of the most common and puzzling phobias is the fear of snakes. It's only natural, of course, to be afraid of a poisonous snake. But many people are just as frightened of the harmless varieties. For such a people, a tiny green grass snake is as terrifying oh, okay. as From a cobra. Yeah. Home. Okay. Some researchers say this Malam. unreasonable fear of any and all snakes is a legacy left to us by our cave dwelling ancestors for whom these reptiles were a real and constant danger. Others maintain that the, the, the fear is as a result of our associating the snake with the notion of evil as in the Garden of Eden. Whatever the reason, the fact remains that for many otherwise normal people, the mere sight of a snake slithering through the countryside is enough to keep them city dwellers forever. All right, so... And the examples here, and the examples here, the word snake and fear have been used a lot. You realize that throughout the paragraph, the word snake and fear kept coming up. And this is to achieve coherence so that the reader will be able to tell that this is what the paragraph is about. I can't hear anything from my end. Am I the only one? I hope others can hear me. Can you hear me, Ad Fellows? Yes, yes we can hear you. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can hear you. We can hear you. All right. Only that Russia was there, but we can't see the screen. I can't see the screen. I can't see the screen from my end here, sir. When what the people are saying that we should check our, our our network, what do we mean by saying we should check our network? How do we check our network? 
I want to know how one should check his network. It's okay, let's move on. <laughs> Somebody is close. It's okay, it's okay. Hey, for instance, I don't see anything. Oh, but I'm just listening. Oh. If you All right. Check I'm, listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. If you're not seeing your screen you from your phone or whatever, just listen to what you're saying. Please, let's go on. Let's go on, please. So that we can continue. I have the slides over there. You know, this is not the only school. I teach somewhere full time. And sometimes I have many students, and if they can't see, all they do is that they open the slides and they follow me from there. You see, so the slides are on the platform, they've been shared over there. All you need to do is open your slide. Let's follow, go where. Uh, all right. So those of you have the slides, can can you place them on the platform? The right. slides. Those of you have the slides, can you place them on the platform? Is there? I'm using a new phone, so I don't have it on my phone, so I'll afford it to you. Sir, is there? Rabone, well, some of us are new there. there. So some people are new on the platform. Let's just. All right, let's go on. Let's go. Wow. Let's go on. Can we go on? But then what? Next week, I'm using a very limited one, 100 people. That's so I can't good. control everybody. Right, let's go on. Let's go on. Pronouns. So all I'm saying is that these words have been repeated deliberately. They've been repeated deliberately. And this is done so that the reader can follow <coughs> the train of thoughts of the writer. That's done so the reader can follow the train of thought of the writer. And sometimes, sometimes... Um, we all do this in our way, it happens unconsciously, but as I've already said, this time round, let's try to do it consciously. Okay, let's move on to pronouns. So, one other way to achieve cohesion, all right, or for you to have coherence in your text is to use pronouns where you start the main idea or points. Where you start the main idea, sorry, the name of the person, and then subsequently you use pronouns. Okay, let's proceed now. So I'm going to read this example and we'll see how pronouns have been used to help achieve coherence. The great white shark is perhaps the best equipped of the ocean's predators. It can grow to 21 feet and weigh three tons with two inch teeth, which can replace themselves within 24 hours when damaged. The shark's sense of smell is so acute that it can detect one ounce of fish blood in a million ounces of water. In addition, it can sense vibrations from 600 feet away. The great white shark is perhaps the best equipped of the ocean's predators. It can grow to 21 feet and weigh three tons with two inch teeth which can replace themselves within 24 hours when damaged. The shark's sense of smell is so acute that it can detect one ounce of fish blood in a million ounces of water. In addition, it can sense vibrations from 600 feet away. Right. You realize at the beginning we started with the great white shark. And then subsequently we started using it. It can grow to 21 feet and weigh three tons with two inch teeth, which can replace themselves within 24 hours when damaged. The name comes again. The shark's sense of smell is so acute that it, it has been used here again, can detect one ounce of fish blood in a million ounces of water. In addition, it, let's see again, can sense vibrations from 600 feet away. So we see that the writer started the name of the, of the subject, that is a great white shark. And then look at this other example. A standing rages are most vivid. His stammering rages are most vivid. His tears 
sat up, watching and feeling for them, but unable to bridge the gap. I learned to love, hate him all in the same breath. No one ever knew this. That's why I kid in love with her father. He was a boxer when I was small. People say he was good and would have made it had he started younger. But he had a wife and growing family to care for. Amateur boxing paid nothing, but he loved it. I think he must have been about 22 then. He claims that we're too young to have seen him fight. But I remember. <laughs> gone, subtle, watching and feeling for them, but unable to bridge the gap, I learned to love, hate him all in the same breath. No one ever knew this. The so I can't lie with her father. He was a boxer when I was small. He would say he was good and we family to care for. Amateur boxing paid nothing, but he loved it. I think he must have been about 22 then. He claims that we're too young to have seen him fight. But I remember. Right, so in this particular example, we started with the pronoun hit. <clears throat> His standard ridges are most vivid. His tears, subtle. Now watch the feeling for them, but unable to bridge it up. I learned to love hit him on the same breath. No one ever knew this. This is why I can't in love with her father. And then we see one particular trend, one particular pronoun we used. He was a boxer when I was small. We would say he was good. And would have made it had he started younger. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he, he had a wife and great family to care for. Amateur boxing paid nothing, but he loved it. I think he must have been about 22 then. He claims that we're too young to have seen him fight. But I remember. We see other pronouns, but then the word he, the pronoun he, 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 has been used a lot. And this is the use of pronouns. Remember, this is not repetition. This is solely the use of pronouns. And if, because they are in there, the paragraph makes sense to all of us. <clears throat> and then there are parallel structures. <clears throat> the parallel structures. These are grammatical structures that are used in several places to achieve coherence. So unlike repetition, where there may be one word or two, or an idea that is repeated, with parallel structures, it's actually a grammatical structure, like a phrase or a sentence that is used many times. It looks like repetition, but it is not repetition. It is more of a grammatical structure. So, even though large tracts of Europe and many old and famous states have fallen or may fall into the grave of the Gestapo and all the odious apparatus of Nazi rule, we shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and on in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Anyway, the network has done its thing again. Let me share my screen again. The network has done its thing again. This has never ever happened in any of my classes. I don't know the why. The devil is a liar. Mm, the devil is a liar. <laughs> All right. So let's just I, I allow. This has been happening, okay? Well. Anyway, but that's never happened to me. No, okay. I use a landline, so it's very friendly. But it's fine. Yes. I can hear you. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Please, I want to make a suggestion. Go ahead, I'm listening. Uh, it's like uh, all of us 
at level 200, we are all doing UGRC 210. Yes. And our number is so huge that if the if you limit the number to hundred as you are saying for next week or even three hundred, some of us are, are, are really struggling to join the class. We have a huge number of two hundred students that are doing UGS to UGS to ten. So if you can increase the the number, we can all have access to to your lecture. Me personally, this is the first time I'm, I'm attending. But anything you want to do, you can uh, you know, to so make it to you. All right. Um, I will address it on, uh, when, we, when we are done with the oh? session. Okay. I will address it when the session is ending, okay? Hello. All right. Hello, I can go ahead. Um, you can't hear, but we can clearly hear you. All right. So I've shared my screen now. I'm praying that many of you can see it. All right, that's fine. Can see it now. Oh. Okay. Hello. Oh. Let's hear you. Hello. I'm listening. Please yes. go ahead. Uh -huh. My brother, I've been uh, at my home and uh, it feels like when something is going wrong, people started talking the way it feels as if you the one talking you are also making a noise i think my phone bell when i was trying to be in the class and the best it's a it's a thing i uh, your car just like a phone look i'm sure no money in the class what i was saying so we are all learning from it but if, 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 you are mature. Right? It's okay. It's okay. Let him finish. 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 The person was making a statement. I allowed him to speak. Allow him, please. Okay. Let, let, let's allow That's peace. Him, please. All right. It's okay. I think we can move on now. We can move on now. Okay. All right. So let's proceed. I'll make sure there's enough time for us to air our views. Nicely. Okay. All right. So I was on parallel and let me read it. It was that the parallel structures, um, there's a particular grammatical structure that is used. It can be a, um, a sentence or a phrase. And that is what makes it different from repetition. With repetition, it will be probably um, a word or an idea that is repeated, but with a parallel structure, it's more like a sentence or a phrase that is used many times, right? So I'm going to read this example again. It's a speech that was made by a former prime minister of the United Kingdom during World War II, Winston Churchill. And he used this, the words in here for a particular purpose. Even though large tracts of Europe and many old and famous states have fallen, or may fall into the grip of the Gestapo and all the odious apparatus of Naziru, we shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and strength in the air. We shall defend our island. We sh whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And even if, which I do not for a moment believe, this island or a larger part, part of it was subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle. And in God's good time, the new world, with all its power and might, comes to the rescue and liberation of the old. Let me read it again. Even though large tracts of Europe and many old and famous states have fallen or may fall into the grip of the Gestapo. And no, the no flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight in the sea and old. We shall, whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beach, we shall fight in the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never, 
this island or a larger part of it were subjugated and starving. Then our, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle. And so in God's good time, the new world of all its power and might comes to the rescue and liberation. All right, so we see that a particular structure has been repeated over and over again. <laughs> we shall not flag. <laughs> we shall not. See, we shall <laughs> not. <laughs> Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's ignore it. Madam, we shall. We shall. <laughs> we shall fight in France. <laughs> oh, this is my whoever you are. Sister Abigail, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. At least we've been afforded the opportunity to get into people's homes. So allow, please. Just sweet, to go. Ghana is sweet. Yes, Ghana is sweet. So let's go on. Let's go on. We shall fight. And then it starts with we shall. And then we shall. And then it starts becoming we shall fight. We shall fight. We shall fight. Okay. And then we shall defend our island. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight. Oh, what have I done? Let me go on over just a minute. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And even if which I do not for a moment believe this island or a large part of it were subjugated and starving, then our island beyond, beyond the seas and armed and guarded by the British fleet would carry on the struggle. And in God's good time, the new world of all its might and power comes to the rescue and liberation of the old. So it's still a repetition of particular structures over here. Hence the name a parallel structure. All right. So we've just looked at this. We've just looked at how to achieve coherence. First, we looked at the elements in the paragraph. And these elements are three. Paragraph completeness, paragraph unity, and then paragraph coherence. Let's look at them, then I'll we'll come back. So we went to these three elements in the paragraph, paragraph unity, Paragraph completeness and paragraph coherence. And then we explain what paragraph unity is, what paragraph completeness is, and then what paragraph coherence is. I explained it. And then from there, I moved on to um, paragraph coherence. I will look at paragraph unity and paragraph completeness. And then from there, we moved on to paragraph coherence. And then a paragraph coherence, we looked at transitional words and phrases. We looked at repetition of keywords. Look at the use of, and then we also have structures. So these are the things we've looked at so far. If there's a question, you can kindly put your hand up, and I'll ask you to pose your question nicely. Any question? Is there something that you don't understand? Is there something that you like me to deal with? Uh, hello. Hello, I'm listening. Yes, uh, this is Richard. Please, can yes, you have any sample essay to try hands on over the week? Definitely, definitely. I'll give you a question. But right. um, we are not done with the whole essay yet. But it's okay. okay. It's a good. It's a good question. Now it's something that we can all do. Okay. This is a dry right. course. Come again. It's a dry course. So. Sure. Sure. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Definitely. You're welcome. Yes. Any so other a, question? The slides right. you're using is mm -hmm. just very much different from what I have. So maybe if I can contact you and take what you have. Yes, you. please. Oh, it's on a platform. Oh, okay. It's on a platform. Don't so, worry. After um, after the lesson, I'll, I'll push you with um, what lecture you're sharing on the platform. Don't worry. All right. So these are slides I use for my students. I It's a combination of your slides and mine and my stuff put together. I use it because it's very easy to understand. That's why I'm we facing this. Come and buy. Yes, those who want to come and buy the book to come and see me. 
Mm-hmm. But you had a soft copy. But you had a soft copy. Okay. But but you had a soft copy. One soft copy. You have everything. Hello, madam. Hello. I'm listening, please. Yes, I'm listening. Go ahead. Is that the one we use during the access course? Exactly, okay. the is same thing we use used during the access course. The access course. Definitely, it's the same thing, please. This is Evans. Evans thing, please. All right. Thank you. Yes, Evans, let's hear you. Sir, me, today's my first time I've had access to join the club. Oh, okay. okay. And... Uh, I think if there is something we can do about this, we should quickly do it because a lot of people are being affected. Anytime right. I try to do the classes, either the class is full or okay. any other. All right, I'll, I'll so talk about it just before we end, please. I'll talk about it. All right, okay. sir. All right, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Let's hear you. Yeah. Um, yes, I hello, madam. Let's, I let's listen. Let's listen. Please. Go ahead, I'm listening. Okay. At the initial stage, when you want to introduce number of people being the participants, um, if I can hear you well, you said the school did not provide you. Um, you mentioned something like the school did not provide, but you are using someone's um, platform. Uh-huh. Yeah. May I know why the school is not responsible for this thing for you? The lecturers or the Why don't you talk about it? Hold when on. We are done with I'll it. talk about it when the semester is about to, when the, when we are about to end the session. I'll talk about this issue. Okay, I'll talk about. I it. thought I thought people are making the general contribution. That's why. Oh yeah, the, well, as to people asking questions as to what we've done so far, so we can answer the question when we are about to end. We'll talk about this issue. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Yes, any uh, other question? Yes, madam. Please, can you throw more light on the paragraph unity? All right, let me go back to paragraph unity. Okay, sir. Hello, let me explain paragraph unity. Okay, pose your question. Pose it quickly. Okay, sir. What I want to ask is that, is it going to be uh, nice for you to always just to remind your reader about what you're talking about? Okay, okay. That's fine. I'll do that. Thank you. Sure. Oh, is this a question to me? It's a question. It's a question oh. that I'm asking. Okay, as in when you're writing them. Okay, let me, let me talk about paragraph unity first. So paragraph unity, all we are saying is this. Remember that we said that the paragraph has a topic sentence. All right. And a topic sentence has a controlling idea. So all we are saying is that everything that you are saying is relating to the controlling idea. That means you can't say anything beyond what the controlling idea has said. For instance, in this example, Accra is a business city. You realize that the whole paragraph is talking about this. It's a business city. The paragraph is not saying anything beyond the fact that Accra is a business city. That means once it does this, we say the paragraph has exhibited unity because it is all the sentences are trying to explain or develop what the controlling idea is saying. If any part of the paragraph says something different from what the controlling idea is trying to say, then we'll say your paragraph does not exhibit unity. Okay. So in the example here, the roads of Accra are always busy. The shops are full of people from the time they open to the time they close. Most of Accra's restaurants and nightclubs are filled to capacity throughout the week. In fact, there's an abundance of hustle and bustle in every sphere of life in Accra. This is, uh, we realize that every single sentence here is helping to explain what the controlling idea is saying. Yeah. Okay, that is paragraph unity. Now, somebody also asked, <clears throat> excuse me, let me clear my throat. Somebody also asked that, um, is it nice to remind your reader every now and then? Yes. And that's why there is repetition. In fact, we do this unconsciously because in writing, if you're writing about Kofi, you realize the name of Kofi will come up every now and then. We do it all the time. But this time around, what we are supposed to do is that we should do it consciously. Every now and then, consciously uh, mention the topic. But don't overdo it. That's why we can, there's also room for pronouns and other things. So we can say it. And if it's a person, you can say he, she or they, we can use pronouns also. So it's all a mixture, all a mixture, please. 
Yeah. If there's any other question, if I've answered your question well, I hope. Yeah. Any other question, please? Is there any other problem? Sure. Yes, boss. I want to know if you have to use all the very um like the paragraph in the paragraph, yeah. Elements, the when three I... elements. Yes, they should all be in your essay. They should all be in your paragraph because your paragraph must be uni unified, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also your paragraph should be complete in that there should be enough information in your paragraph. <laughs> Provide oh, yeah. detail, enough detail. And then the product should also be coherent in that the ideas should be arranged in a systematic manner that makes sense to the reader. Okay, so I mean, so these at least every paragraph should contain one of them. Yeah. All of them, all of them, all of them, because every paragraph must have enough information, every paragraph must be unified, it must exhibit unity, and every paragraph must also have be coherent that means must make sense. So all three should be present in every part. Okay. Thank you. Roland. All right. Hello, madam. Yeah, please. I want to know. Um, so with the introduction to all these things must be present in it. Hold on. I haven't yet question. talked about introductions. I haven't yet talked about introductions. I'll be moving to introductions soon. But for now, I've restricted myself to oh, because you. Yes, yeah, so I want to know. So, okay, with all and um, with the three, they are supposed to be present in each paragraph. Each paragraph, please. Each paragraph. Each, each paragraph. But forget so about the introduction. Must be, okay. Forget about the introduction, the conclusion. These are in a class of their own, and I'll be talking about them soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, please. Sir. Yes, pose your question. Please, I'm listening. I'm listening, please. I've, mm -hmm. I have some hands up. So pose your question quickly. So those two hands are up can quickly pose the question. Madam, I can't hear your question. Yes, your network is not stable. Hello, okay. Okay. Sir, please, can you? Hello, sir. All right, let's take the one speaking. Let's. Um, this my mayor. Go ahead, I'm listening. Speak, I'm listening. All right, Evans, your hand is up. Let's hear you, please. If I see you're not ready to speak, mute your microphone. Dixon Clucci, let's hear you. I see your hand up. Dixon. Abdul Gafaru. Abdul Gafaru. Abdul Gafaru, you can pose your question. Right. Any other person wants to ask a question can go ahead, please. Mami, I would say yes, she sir. just uh, go ahead. Sir, I, I want to know. If we can use transitional words to introduce a sentence. Yes, you can use it when you are starting one paragraph. Okay. Yes. It helps the, right. the reader know the connection. So if you are going to listen the previous paragraph, you talked about a, a particular issue. And the next topic, you, the next paragraph, you want to add some more information to what you've already said. You can start it in addition or also. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful. You're welcome. You're welcome. Sir, right. Yes, my gentlemen. Is, um, is it compulsory to have a paragraph to have stability, completeness? Okay, can you ignore one and then? They should be all present in your work. There's no way you can write a good... There's no way you can write a good paragraph. Ivan Senyo, you are disturbing. Ivan Senyo, you are disturbing. You have your video on, you have your microphone on. I will appreciate it if you mute it, please. Um, you, you, there's no way you can have a good paragraph if the paragraph doesn't exhibit unity. And it can't be a good paragraph if it does not exhibit coherence. Too. The paragraph must exhibit all of these. The paragraph must exhibit all of these. 
and the brother must exhibit everything, everything, everything. All right, Evans, the noise is just too much. I'll come and give you a knock on your head wherever you are. All right, let's go on. Any other question, please? Yeah, but I want to ask one question. Go ahead, please. Ask your question. Someone just asked if you could be to begin a plan. Yeah. And you say it's so in that case, so if you begin with transitional wealth, where do you put your topic sentence? That is oh, my question. The transitional word will be part of the topic sentence. I'll show you okay. an essay. I'll show you an essay soon. This essay, I, okay. those of you who are in level 100 and those who are in the access program with me, you would get to see it. Yes. I also need okay, to say that. You. Yes. There are people here who don't have our slides. Though some of you were with me in level 100, some of you were with me during the access course. So you seem to have everything. But then there are people here who don't have the slides because it's on Sakai. And there are people from all over Ghana. There are people from Tamale, there are some from Takradi, etc. And some of us are hearing us from the, for the first time. Mm. That's why they don't have these things. So let's bear with them. And um, so um, let me show you this essay. Hopefully it's here. Yes, it's an essay that's part of the slide, so it's at the bottom of it. I wrote a sample of a well-written essay. I have the introduction here. I don't talk a lot about the introduction. How precious. Please, whoever knows Evans or Fori Senior AJ, should kindly tell him to um, reduce the noise. I'm sure he has a the, friend the over The noise here. is coming from Infinix or Infinix is coming from Ivan Zofori Senior. His microphone is on. I have Dixon here, but Dixon's phone is not making noise. Infinix just muted and the noise is gone. Mm. Yes. There's another one, Ivan Zofori. He's also there. Okay, so let me read. Let me read. So here we go. Corruption is a canker that Ghana, like most developing countries, is grappling with. It is one of the issues plaguing Ghana that is difficult to root out. According to ex-president Kufo, corruption started from Adam. That's it has become a part of the lifestyle of Ghanaians. Corruption in Ghana can be kept in a number of ways. Corruption in Ghana can be kept in a number of ways, which include the following. Punishing the participants, educating Ghanaians on its effects, inculcating in Ghanaians a culture that frowns on corruption, and putting in place structures that make it difficult to take place. Corruption is a canker that Ghana, like most developing countries, is grappling with. It is one of the issues plaguing Ghana that is yeah, the difficult one with to the uh, According to experts, in quote, corruption started from Ghana. In Ghana can be kept in a number of ways, which include the following: punishing the participants, educating Ghanaians on its effects, inculcating in Ghanaians a culture that frowns on corruption, and putting in place structures that make it difficult to take place. That is the thesis statement. Now let's go on to the body paragraphs. Next, 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 next,
So the Evans guy that one thing I hate is strong shot that he has on the I mean his microphone so much. Oh. All right, let's progress. Let's go on. I think yeah, yes, let's, finally mute let's, mute everybody let's go so that we can have to mind. So here's the first topic sentence. It sits on top of the paragraph. Corruption in Ghana can be eliminated. Okay, let me explain this. Let me explain where we get the topic sentences from. And then I will come to the topic sentences. Then we'll get to see how they've been used. All right. So let me continue with the Let me continue the paragraph. Corruption in Ghana can be eliminated when those who engage in it are punished severely to act as a deterrent to others. Often, people act with impunity when the law seems lax in punishing offenders. However, people are more careful in the way they act when they know their acts will not go unpunished. In the developed countries, people are very careful in their financial transactions because they know the law will catch up with them. In the Western world, long prison terms await all those who are caught engaging in corrupt acts. In ancient countries like China and Singapore, corrupt officials are sentenced to death. This has reduced corruption to its barest minimum in these countries. Let me use this sentence. Okay, let me finish reading. Edu also, educating people on the negative effects of corruption who go a long way to curb it. Most Ghanaians are ignorant of the negative effects of corruption, thus they condone it in one way or the other. Others simply look the other way and refuse to expose those caught engaging in it. Education will point it out to Ghanaians that the effects of corruption cannot be overemphasized. People die in road accidents because of badly constructed roads. Pregnant women may die because of the absence of medicine. This is all because someone has siphoned the funds meant for these projects into his personal account. account. In addition, corruption, so those of you asking of the transitional terms, in addition, corruption can be kept when a culture that frowns on it or that frowns on corruption is inculcated in a citizenry. Having a culture that sees corruption as wrong is the best way to, to fight this canker. This can be done when teachers instill in their students the knowledge of the negative effects of corruption. Also, parents must set good examples at home. They should know that their children watch as they place a few wads of cash in the hands of policemen. Moreover, religious leaders like pastors, imams and others must preach against it to their congregations. This will eliminate the canker of corruption in Ghana. Finally, Corruption can be caught, can be stopped. So this is another transitional term. Finally, corruption can be fought. When systems that make it difficult to okay are also are put in place. The government must invest in a software that makes it difficult to detect corrupt acts. Such a system should be able to detect the transfer and movement of government funds. Also, the government must make sure the various heads of organizations provide regular reports on their spending. In addition, boom, this will go a long way to reduce corruption in Ghana. In some, corruption in Ghana can be caved when its perpetrators are punished severely to act as a deterrent to others. When Ghanaians get to know its effect on innocent and vulnerable members of the country, and when a culture that frowns on corruption is instilled in the citizenry, also systems that easily expose corrupt deeds must be put in place. That's the conclusion. All right. So you realize that in the course of the paragraph, there are times that are used also like this one, also educating people on the negative of, in the ne on the negative effects of corruption. We'll go a long way to care about. That's a topic sentence. And then I have in addition term, corruption can be kept when a culture of France on the cater in the
final system for transitional term. Okay. And there's one last one that tell us the conclusion. In sum or in summary, corruption in Ghana can be kept when the perpetrators are punished severely to act as a deterrent to others when Ghanaians get to know its effect on innocent lives, on innocent and vulnerable members of the country, and when a culture that frowns on corruption is instilled in a citizenry. Also, system that is less probably, I hope you are understanding now, as in how come the transitional terms can be placed at the beginning. Now, let me tell you where we get our topic sentences from. The topic sentences are obtained from the thesis, which also plays in the introduction. Now, there are different ways of starting the introduction. Now, um, you should not start, let's say, being taught to write an essay on corruption. Ask yourself, what exactly on corruption do you want to see? You've been taught to write an essay on corruption or corruption in Ghana. What about corruption in Ghana do you want to see? Okay. Do you want to talk about corruption, the fact that um, corruption um, is pervasive? Or you want to talk about ways in which corruption can be stopped? Or do you want to talk about the causes of corruption? In this particular paragraph, I see, I chose to talk about the, if, uh, the, how corruption can be stopped. How corruption can be stopped. And so what, do you, what did I do? I started with some information that led me to the thesis statement. The thesis statement is the main idea that runs through the whole essay. And so when you are given the essay question, you formulate it in a way that will talk about exactly what you want to talk about in your essay. So develop it. As I said earlier, you've been told to write an essay on corruption in Ghana. What, what exactly do you want to say? Let me give an essay, like, uh, essay question. And then in 400 words, write an essay on corruption in Ghana. That is too broad. You never finish writing this. And so what do you do? You decide, what do I want to write? Okay, I want to write how, um, um, how corruption can be stopped. And so you turn it into a sentence. This essay will discuss the ways in which corruption can be kept in Ghana, period. You can start your introduction by talking about the topic. Yes, in our next session, I'll talk about it. But then ease the reader to the thesis statement. Say something that will lead to the thesis statement. Say something interesting that will catch the reader's attention. And then it will lead to the thesis statement like this, that Ghana countries is grappling with. It is one of those, according to express that before, in quotes, corruption started from other. and of the lifestyle of Ghanaians. And then my thesis statement comes. Corruption in Ghana can be kept in the following ways. That's my thesis statement. And that I decided to list the ways in which corruption can be kept. That one proposed is not Punishing the participants. Educating participants. Educating Ghanaians, punishing the participants, educating Ghanaians on its <laughs> effects, inculcating in Ghanaians a culture that frowns on corruption, and putting in place structures that make it difficult. Okay, to to Ruben. Remember, it's just the thesis statement that we need. Just the corruption in Ghana can be kept in the following ways. And then I listed the points after it. Or or you can simply say, this essay will discuss the ways in which corruption can be kept in Ghana. To you. And then you can choose to list your points, just as I've listed my points here. And so this how, this is how we go to the thesis. This is how we go to the topic sentences. You realize that in the thesis statement, I listed some points. As in, I wrote this, corruption in Ghana can be kept in the following ways. And then the points started coming, punishing the participants. 
and huh? inculcating in guys a culture that frowns on corruption and putting in place structures that make it difficult to take place. So I picked one and then I turned it into a sentence. Punishing the participants. Corruption in Ghana can be eliminated when those who engage in it are punished to act as a deterrent to others. Here we are. Corruption in Ghana can be eliminated when those who engage in it are punished severely to act as a deterrent to others. Remember that I took the first point and then I turned it into a sentence. So that's where the topic sentences come from. They come from the thesis statement. And then the next one, educating Ghanaians on its effects. Also, educating people on the negative effects of corruption will go a long way to curb it. Yeah. Also, educating people on the negative effects of corruption will go a long way to curb it. I took one of the points and then I turned it into a sentence. And that's what I did throughout the essay. So remember, the thesis statement is the main idea and it runs through the whole essay, but then the paragraph takes a portion of the thesis statement. For instance, it had told to write on, um, um, let's see, um, the negative effects of, uh, Let's say I've been told to write an essay on uh, LGBT rights in Ghana. LGBT rights in Ghana. What do you want to say about LGBT rights in Ghana? That is too broad. So you narrow it down to what exactly you want to say about LGBT rights in Ghana. You can say in your essay, LGBT rights are alien and Ghanaians consider it as an abomination. That's it. So in the essay, each paragraph will take a portion that tells us why you think LGBT rights is alien and an abomination in Ghana. So first of all, you can say culturally, many uh, culturally, um, the culturally Ghanaians find LGBT rights abhorrent. And then you can take the next point. Secondly, LGBT rights do not contribute in any way to the development of the country. And then in addition, or you can go secondly, thirdly, um, LGBT rights, um, et cetera, et cetera. You, you can find different points. Come again. It's a sin. Well, it's considered by many Ghanaians who are religious as a so, sin. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, please, what's the full meaning of the LGBT right? Oh, um, it's um, lesbians, gays, bisexual. bisexual, and then transgender, LGBTQ, bisexual, transgender, not the pan i all right, I've reshared it. So I've seen the hand. Let me look at the hands quickly. So let me let me deal with this people quickly and then we'll run up. There's Charles Ban. Charles, let's hear you, Charles. Charles Ban. Any other question you can pose it. Michael, you can also pose your question. I see your hands up. Yes, sir, please. Uh, I want you to emphasize a little bit on the uh, uh, Topic sentence and then the thesis statement. statement. Okay. Yeah, then Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You can mute your microphone now. Kim Favor, is there a question? You can pose it. Hello, sir. Or you can Charles. mute your microphone for us. Action is that yes, Charles. Let's hear you. This LGBT statement mm -hmm. that I just gave us. Yes. More or less a minute. Please speak up. Your voice is so low. Okay. 
this statement that you just gave us mm-hmm. see, it included three different topic sentences that mm-hmm. yeah. aside these three um, um, topic sentences can you develop a paragraph yes Yes, you are not bound to list your points here. So if you want to list your points, list the ones that you'll be talking about. Okay. List the ones you'll be talking about. Or you can just you can just list your points in your book. You can list the points in your book and then have the thesis statement over there. Uh, and people have a problem with writing the thesis statement. This is just how to go about it. Say what you're you want to say. This essay will discuss the ways in which corruption can be solved in Ghana. If it's erosion or galamse, this essay will discuss the ways in which galamse can be discussed in Ghana, can be, can be dealt with in Ghana. Write it in that particular style and it will be easy for you. But remember, the thesis statement sits at this level. Place the thesis but statement in your can you introduction. In and leave your microphone on like that. Oh. At this stage, at this stage, Place the thesis statement in your introduction. Start your introduction and then bring the thesis statement. And then as much as possible, let the topic sentences sit on top of your paragraphs. This will be helpful for you and it will indeed save your lives, please. All right. This will be helpful and it will indeed go a long way to help you. All right. Now, somebody wants to know the difference between the thesis statement and the topic sentences. The thesis statement is a broad idea. And it is often given to you in the essay question. For instance, if you are told to write an essay on Galamse in Ghana, this is very broad. So what exactly do you want to say about Galamse in Ghana? Galamse in Ghana must be stopped immediately. Or the Galamse in Ghana um, causes a lot of problems to Ghana. Or Galamse is causing a lot of problems to Ghana. So in the essay, what do you want to, uh, you, you talk about the various problems that Galamse is causing to Ghana. Or you can just list the points after the thesis statement. That's all. And the points that you want to talk about, you turn them into sentences and they'll become topic sentences. So each paragraph will take just one point because there will be a controlling idea that will be limiting you. I hope I've explained that. Please. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Now. Yes. All right. Now I would like as the session we've gone. Yeah, it's past eight. I like to talk about a few things. The first thing is that the slides, they're on the platform. If you don't have the slides and um, see the class rep or just give my number out. I'm going to say my number. Those of you who are not on the platform, you can save it. And um I think the yes, class yes. rep is here. Raboni is here. He will also give his number to you. Those who are not on the platform. So he can place you there nicely. And so that's my number. 054. Mm. 054. Five. So I'm, re- I'm repeating it. I'm saying each twice. 054. 0243574. 054-0243-574. Zero five four zero two four three five seven four. If you go into chat, you see the class rep's number there, Raboni. It's there. It's there. Zero five four zero two four three five seven four. That's my number. Mm. I'm, I'm writing it in the chat 